for part four of Gen Chem 1, Chapter 6, we're going to build on some ideas from the previous three videos. And in this segment, we're going to talk about orbital diagrams and electron configurations, both of which are used to describe the electronic structure of atoms here in section 6.4. Now, most of the things that are mentioned on these next two slides have been discussed previously. Right? Our first quantum number that we list in order, n, is the principal quantum number. And we said in the previous video that n describes the energy of atomic orbitals. So as the value of n increases, we get further away from the nucleus. That reduces the electrostatic attraction between the positively charged nucleus, right, from the protons, and the negatively charged electron. Okay, so further apart, they are higher in energy, okay, which is what our second bullet point here is talking about, and effectively the third, right? If we are at higher energy, we're less stable. And remember, everything in chemistry is about reaching the lowest energy configuration possible. Okay, so that talks about N, but what about the subshells themselves? Now remember the s orbital, it has just that one orbital within the subshell, right? Spherical shaped, it can hold two electrons. But everything else, the p, the d, and the f subshells, right, has additional orbitals. The p has three, the d has f, or sorry, the d has five, the f has seven. Right? And because the electrons that are within those orbitals repel one another, that makes the higher value of L also a higher energy orbital, right? which is what we see right here. S is the lowest energy, that's an L value of zero, followed by P, L value of one, D, L value of two, F, L value of three. Yep. So we increase in energy going S to P to D to F. And because chem is all about reaching the lowest energy state possible, Right? We have to account for those things, the value of N and the value of L, because when we're putting electrons into an atom, they fill the lowest energy orbitals first. And that gives us what an orbital diagram looks like here in figure 6.25. Right, this is called an energy level diagram. You see energy over here on the y-axis, and our electrons fill in from the bottom up just like if you were filling a glass of water. It wouldn't start spontaneously filling halfway up, right? It goes from the bottom up. We'll talk about that in just a second, known as the Aufbau principle. Yep. So the lowest energy, right, the 1s, followed by 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, et cetera. Um, so this we'll pick back up with orbital diagrams in a second. Uh, but that brings us to electron configurations. Yep. We use this phenomena, an electron configuration, to describe the arrangement of electrons in orbitals with a nice abbreviated configuration, right? An easy, quick way to describe it. And we do that with a series of symbols that give us three pieces of information. It tells us the principal quantum number. It tells us the value of L, right? The orbital type. So it tells us N, it tells us L, and it tells us the number of electrons that are within that subshell. And these first two points we discussed before, right? We refer to N with a number and L with a letter. So the new part is number three here, right? This superscript that describes the number of electrons that are contained within that subshell. So looking at hydrogen here, right? This is the electron configuration, 1s1. This first number one, which we just write as a normal number, think about it almost like a coefficient, right? That tells you the value of the principal quantum number, n. The letter then tells you the value of l, because I see s here, I know that means an l value of zero. And then the superscript tells you the number of electrons that are within that subshell. Okay, so 1s1, we've got one electron in there, because hydrogen only has one electron. Now the s subshell maxes out at two electrons, the P subshell, because it has three different orbitals within that subshell, and they can each hold two, maxes out at six. The D subshell maxes out at 10, and the F subshell maxes out at 14. And that brings us to the Aufbau principle that I alluded to before. Now that first electron in hydrogen, right, went into the lowest energy orbital. 
and every electron after that will fill the lowest energy from the bottom up. So to determine the electron configuration for something that's neutral, okay, we're gonna talk about ions in a later video. Right now we're just thinking about neutral atoms. Remember from the beginning of the semester, if something's neutral, that means it has the same number of electrons as it does protons. We can determine the number of protons from the atomic number. So if we're just determining the electron configuration of something that's neutral, we have to have the same number of electrons that's equal to the number of protons, which we found from the atomic number. Number of electrons equal to the atomic number. Okay. So as we continue from hydrogen on, right, going from hydrogen to helium to lithium to beryllium, we're adding one electron each time. Okay. And that's always going to the subshell of the lowest available energy. And that is what we referred to before. And now we're defining right, a principle you should be familiar with, the Aufbau principle, which comes from German to build up, from the bottom up, okay? So now we've got two things to pay attention to when we do electron configurations. The Aufbau principle, going from lowest energy to highest, as well as the Pauli exclusion principle, making sure that no two electrons have the exact same set of quantum numbers. And there's actually two ways to do these electron configurations. Right, there's the method that's shown here in figure 6.27, right, this kind of diagonal arrow method. And if you took chemistry previously and you learned how to do it that way and you're comfortable with it, that's fine. Keep on doing it that way. But I actually don't teach this method. What I teach for our Chem 1550 right, is using the periodic table, which is alluded to as in figure 6.28. I will upload a video after this one showing how to mark up the periodic table and use it reading like a book to determine the electron configuration of anything. Okay, so look for that video following this one. But to wrap up this discussion, right, we also need another type of orbital diagram. Instead of having the box, the lines in the energy level diagram, these types of orbital diagrams use boxes to give us a nice picture representation of electron configuration. And how do we do that? Once we have the electron configuration, right, we give a box for each orbital. So hydrogen, we had before, is just 1s1. Okay, so I take the 1s that has just one orbital, so it gets one box, which I label 1s, and because it has one electron, I put a single arrow in that. And then when I fill in a second electron, because each box can only hold two, remember every orbital can only hold two electrons, right? that second electron then goes as a down arrow. A couple of things conventionally, notice these arrows only have one barb, right? It's not a two barbed arrow like you would traditionally draw an arrow. My tools load here, right? Notice we're not drawing an arrow with two barbs like that. It's just a single one. And another thing, you always draw the up arrow first and then the down arrow second. And those represent, as it mentions down here, your two values of M sub S. And that's why we can only have two arrows in the boxes because we can only have two possible values of M sub S, plus one half and minus one half. So what about after hydrogen? Then we go to helium. Helium can tolerate a second electron in the same box. Okay, 1s2, totally fine. But then I've taken up that whole orbital. So for lithium, I need to go into the 2s, and it just needs one electron. Lithium has an atomic number of three. Beryllium has an atomic number of four. They're neutral, so they get three electrons and four electrons respectively. Okay, and notice, it's arrow up, then arrow down, arrow up, and then the fourth one, arrow down. And they build on each other. Everybody's just adding one electron to the one that came previously. Okay. But after beryllium, right, our next electron, which would be the fifth electron over here, then goes into the 2p orbital, 2p subshell, right, which has three orbitals. So when I get to boron over here, right, now to draw this p subshell, which is made up of three orbitals, right? It gets three boxes, but it only has one electron in the 2p, so it's just a single arrow. And again, by convention, you show it all the way to the left. 
And then when we go to carbon, which has an additional electron, now we're up to six total. That electron configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. And now we're faced with a dilemma, right? Do I put that extra arrow in an empty box? Or do I pair it up with the one from boron? And we have a rule for that. It's called Hund's rule. Lowest energy configuration for an atom right, is that that has the maximum number of unpaired electrons. So to say that a different way, you should fill every empty box first before you start to pair anything up. Okay? Keep in mind, we always have to go lowest energy to highest energy. So that's why I pair up the 1s and the 2s first because they're lower in energy. But then when I get to the 2p and these things are degenerate in energy to one another, I, now, every box, because it's a set of three that are equal in energy, everybody gets one before I start to pair them up. And that's what we see going for nitrogen. Again, now that third electron would go in what was previously an empty box here for carbon. So I filled in there. But now for oxygen, where, where I'm up to eight total electrons, then I'm not going to fill in that eighth electron over here and go even higher in energy, now I'm going to start to pair them up. I see it for oxygen, and then chlorine, and then neon. Okay, and neon, these noble gases are nice and stable because they're completely filled. That makes them not very reactive. Okay. And another way to think about this, right, is if you are on a tight budget in your apartment hunting, Right, you always want to go for whatever the cheapest apartment is. That's what's lowest in energy. Same thing are electrons. So if there's space in the 1S or the 2S, then they're going to choose to go into those cheaper apartments because they're on a tight budget. Right? But if you're forced to spend the same amount of money right over here, and you can choose to have a roommate or have the place all to yourself, right? the electrons are making the same kind of decision. Right? Now that electron is going to choose to live by itself. Right? They fill up every empty box. But then, right over here for oxygen, when I get to that eighth electron, now it's not going to choose an even more expensive, higher energy penthouse apartment. Right? Now it's just going to choose to have a roommate. Right? Kind of a different abstract way of thinking about it. Two definitions to finish up this video section. Okay, the electrons that are highest in energy, so all the way to the right of our orbital diagrams, are called valence electrons. These are really important terms on this slide, 78. Okay, we're going to continue to use them in chapter 7 and 8. So our highest energy electron, whatever has the highest value of n, those are known as valence electrons. Anything else that's lower in energy, smaller value of n, are called core electrons. And an important idea for our next video is our core electrons are always completely filled because we always go from low energy and completely fill it up to high energy. So those core electrons right, always represent some type of noble gas. And we're going to use that idea in the next video to, to talk about abbreviated electron configurations, which is what this bullet point down at the bottom is referring to. Okay. So to quickly see that, right, right here, if I look at the electron configuration for sodium, Notice over here, what's the highest n, the highest principal quantum number? It's three. So sodium has one valence electron. Everything else with a smaller value of n, n of one, n of two for these guys, those are called core electrons. So summary from this video, make sure you know how to do electron configurations, right? View the partner video with the periodic table as well. Know how to do orbital diagrams and know the definition of core and valence electrons. And we'll pick back up with those in the next video.